Mbela. Pambili Gauteng Pambili. Mahambe la masela magahambe. Magahambe la masela magahambe. Democrats do melang. Sanbonani Abshini. It fills me with great pride standing here as the provincial leader of the next coming province that will be governed by the Democratic Alliance. And we are not apologizing about it. We are going to govern this province. A couple of weeks ago, you and me must, and we created a blue, um, a blue sea um, across um, the city of Twane when we marched to the union buildings. And then we said that we were getting ourselves to win this province of Gauteng on the 29th of May. I saw an army of people ready to make sure that we do govern this province of Gauteng. And we have to govern this province, Democrats. Because if we don't, I promise you the next five years there will be nothing to save. They have looted each and everything that they can loot. Infrastructure is falling apart. We now have streets that are exploding left, right and center. We are now being blamed for something that they knew about 20 years ago in Hamans Kral, the water problem in Hamans Kral. While we in 2016, when we came in, we said, let's go and fix the problem. And because comrades were not going to benefit from that contract, non Fula Mukonyana stopped us from fixing the water in Hamans Kral. Now they want to come and blame us. When we said, let's work around a plan to make sure that the Rayval, which was designed and built 60 years ago, will be able to then take care of the next 60 years if we increase the capacity and we fix the problem that is going towards Temba. When we said to them, let's make sure that the pipes that are coming from Temba Dam all the way into Haman's Kral are clean and are the correct ones, they said, no, no, no. If it doesn't benefit my comrade, we don't want to hear it. But we were saying, as I went to Hamas Kral with David Makura, but the people of Hamas Kral will be the beneficiaries of this. People we have to rescue out there. Infrastructure is falling apart, as I said. We see streets that are exploding. We see buildings that are, that are now being, uh, that are getting fired or that are catching fire on a daily basis. The training, when in Atridgeville, you used to know that by quarter past four in the morning, that will be the train that will be coming. You could know that it's quarter past four in the morning, the first train is coming. You would know by half past four that the second train is coming. You would know by nine o'clock that morning, you would have already had seven, eight trains that would have been coming through to Atridgeville. Honayanu gets a guy. Honayanu gets a guy. The people of Hamas Kral don't even know what the sound of a train sounds like anymore. The people of Orlando don't even know what the sound of a train sounds like anymore. The people of Firanachen don't even know what a train sounds like anymore. They don't even know that a train can be a cheaper mode of transport that can get them to and from places of work or if they want to go uh, find work that they can use that. There are people who now have to then deal with load shedding and water shading at the same time every single day. When we said to them years ago, you are going to plunge South Africa into crisis with load shading, they said, no, you are being melodramatic, there's nothing wrong, where are we right now? And they are lying, they're sending Sputa to lie to the people and say, by next year, the, the, he's, he'll be out of job because there won't be load shading. Maga. Because at the same time, they are sending Nerosa to approve up to stage 16, that they can go up to stage 16 of load shedding. Now, why would the regulator approve you to go even higher if you are now working on a, on, on a solution on the other end? Maga. You now go to police stations. I've been to all 143 police stations in Kauti. Police stations are sitting there without holding cells. Police stations are there right now where people at 6 o'clock, the police station closed down. You go to Juke Lane, you can't even go after 6 o'clock and report anything because there won't be any police to help you. You go to Juke Lane and you report a crime. The police wants to be escorted to a crime scene. Who must escort who? You go and report and call 10 one you are lucky if your call gets answered. And when it gets answered, 
you are lucky to get a vehicle that is sent to come and investigate what is happening. But at the same time, the same police, when there is drugs that are sold in the community, you'll see those same vehicles coming into the same streets, coming to collect Jojo. We are sitting with a problem where our mothers, our sisters have to go to clinics at 4 o'clock in the morning only to be told 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we cannot find your file or we don't have your medication come next week. We are sitting with a minister of police that is saying to us, you are lucky as a woman to be raped only once. A minister who is scared of criminals and expect that the police will go out there and do what needs to be done. Aye, man. Aye. Aye. How dare wake up? We need to do something here. We need to do something and we need to do something now. We are sitting where people have been made promises and now they have to rely on the 350, which you cannot even get far, guy, on a 350 year. When you've bought 12,5 Yamupi, when you've bought a fish, well, if an eel, and then what happens from there? We are saying, instead of then hooking people, got 350, hook people by jobs, give people jobs, and get people dignity of owning a job, working, being able to provide for themselves. That's what we want. And we have a plan for their democrats. Our plan is to fix the infrastructure of housing, fix water and electricity, Make sure that we are able to then provide security in Gauteng for the people um, here in Gauteng. And you will see that investors will then begin to then come in in their numbers. It is not by mistake what is happening in the Western Cape. They're busy bragging to then say, oh, we've created so many jobs. Let me tell you the lies. Four out of five jobs that have been created in South Africa in the last six months have been created under the DA government. Four out of five of the jobs that have been created in South Africa have been created where the DA governs. You know why? Because we invest in our infrastructure, because we also ensure that we are also uh, providing safety and security. Honale Omongamo who promised to 500,000 jobs. 500,000 jobs at 8,000 rent a job a month. You do the math, that's 4, that's 4 billion rent every month. It's a guy till day. Where's that money coming from? The money is not there, but it shows you the desperation that they know that their time is up. The state has no fair pay. And because it was never meant to make sure that they get the jobs, that they give them the decency. It was supposed to be just for political expediency. Because there was never a plan in the first place. We asked in the legislature, what is the plan, where is the budget? Dololo. Now, there's no money that is coming their way. But we are saying your time is up. We are saying, how dare you need rescue and we are on a mission to make sure that we rescue you. We are saying to mama, you will not be able to, you, you will not continue to walk in shame or in fear because we will be there with visible policy. We'll make sure that you don't have to take off your pants and sleep with the counselor for you to get a job. We'll make sure that mama, when you go to that clinic, the clinic is open and it's clean and is operating and you have to go there and get your medication on time. We'll make sure that when you go to the police station, the police station have a holding cell if we need a holding cell. We'll make sure that we attract investors that will begin to create the jobs that Gauteng need. We'll make sure that we privatize the rail so that we are able to then get people to jobs and to job opportunities affordably, quicker, and and safely but importantly we will make sure that the dream of 1994 of a better life becomes a reality here in the province of Gauteng under the DA leadership so Democrats as you go out there tonight as you go out there and we embark on the next seven weeks instill hope in the people tell everybody hope is alive in the Democratic Alliance Hope is there for people in Gauteng to make sure that we ultimately 
make that dream of 1994 a reality in 2024. Amanda! Amanda! Pambili GA Pambili! Pambili GA Pambili! Thank you very much. Viva Solim Simanga, Solim Simanga, viva. viva! You know, that is what we feel, Democrats. And I know now, in this moment, you feel something in your heart. You feel it, don't you? You feel it. You feel it. Everybody in here feels it. And I want you to put your hand on your heart now. You put your hand on your heart. And you feel that heartbeat. That heartbeat that you feel, that is all of South Africa. That is a country that is ready to be rescued. That is a country that wants to be rescued because each and every South African wants a country where their children can grow up in. So Democrats, allow me to bring on one more man. This is somebody who's gone from corner to corner of this country, who is going from corner to corner in the Republic of South Africa, who is leaving no stone unturned, who is leaving no community unseen, who is speaking to each and every willing South African, a man who is on a rescue tour to ensure that South Africans know that the Democratic Alliance is ready to rescue South Africa. This is a man who is ready to ensure that we are led nationally, to ensure that we have a country that we can rescue, and to ensure that we have a future in the Republic of South Africa. So put your hands together for the man who you know is going to rescue South Africa. Make some noise for John Steenhazen! It's so great to be with you in this wonderful province that's soon to be a DA-led province. And it's a great to be with you, Mr. Mayor, in your wonderful city of Chwane with all these beautiful Democrats this evening because when Pretoria works, South Africa works. It's such a privilege to be with all of you Democrats this evening. This wonderlijk om vanavond in Pretoria te wees vir die heel eerste aand van ons landweie tour. As you would have already noticed, this tour is unlike any other political event that South Africa has ever seen. It's got music, it's got live entertainment, and it's got speeches from some of the most dedicated freedom fighters that you will ever meet in South Africa. And we're traveling around the country in those big trucks. Did you see the big truck outside? There's three of those big trucks. And we're traveling across the length and breadth of this beautiful country to take our message of hope, of change, and of a better future to every corner of our beautiful country. And tonight, I'm going to go behind the headlines with you. I'm going to go behind the headlines. Together, Democrats, we're going to strip away all the noise and all the fluff, and we're going to look at the real choices that face all of us in this important election less than 50 days away. But above all, this rescue tour is about hope. It's about hope. 
And boy, I think we need some hope in South Africa right now, don't we? And that's exactly what I'm here to deliver. I'm going to share with you a new vision for this beautiful country that we believe South Africa can be. How we, as the citizens, can unite around a common vision and for us to be able to achieve that vision. But Democrats, for such a vision to be credible, for hope to be practical and real, we need to start by understanding the root cause of the problems we face. And in my job as leader of the opposition, I get to travel across the length and breadth of South Africa. I'm privileged to see the huge beauty of our land and the potential of the amazing people in South Africa. But especially in, re in recent years, despite our rich resources, despite the rich endowments and the optimism that met our fight for freedom in the country, I get the sense that this has all been replaced by a new feeling. It's a new feeling. It's a feeling of despair. In Butterworth in the Eastern Cape, I recently experienced that despair as a husband, but also as the father of three young girls. When I visited a community where a single mother had ended the lives of her three children and then had taken her own life because she could no longer afford to feed her family. She mixed rat poison with the last little bit of food that they had in the house and she fed it to her children before she hung herself. She was only found days later when the loan shark whom she had been borrowing money from to try and feed her family came knocking on that door looking for his money to be paid back. This broke my heart. But sadly, this is one unimaginable tragedy in a country drowning in despair. And the root cause of this despair is just up the road from us, in the union buildings. That is the root cause of the despair in our country. Because from the top of that hill, the ANC looks down on the suffering of the people of South Africa. A country that they've condemned 40% of our citizens to languish in unemployment. Where seven out of 10 of our young people cannot find work. A country without reliable electricity and water. A country where 84 people are murdered every single day. And our mothers and our daughters and our grandmothers do not feel safe on the streets of South Africa. This is the despair that we live in. And this is despair caused by the betrayal of the corrupt ANC. But, but my friends, this is where the first glimmer of hope comes in that I want to share with you this evening. Because even though it's taken 30 years, the ANC's time has finally run out. The people's patience has run out. Now, during the 2021 local government elections, the ANC lost the outright majority it needs to stay in power. You see, any party that wants to govern South Africa on its own needs 50% plus one in order to be able to form a government. Now, even though 2021 was a municipal rather than a national election, when you add up the ANC's results from there, they only were able to reach 47%. And since 2021, the good news is that their vote has been going down and down and down every single day. 
The latest opinion poll from the Brentist Foundation measures support for the ANC at just 39%. Today, the Social Research Foundation released a poll with a similar number. The same poll measures support for the DA at 27%. That's good news. That's hope. Now, you may be asking, what do all these percentages mean? What does the maths tell us? The maths tells us that for the first time in 30 years, the next election results are not a foregone conclusion and that there's everything to play for in this election. In every previous election, we all knew the ANC was going to win. We just needed to work out by how much. So the first, the first bit of hope and good news this evening is that those days are long gone. The ANC will not get a majority in this next election. Because, because you, the people, are going to teach the corrupt ANC a lesson that they will never forget. <laughs> but the story doesn't end there. Because now that we know the ANC's majority is on the way out, we even need, now need to know and ask ourselves a new question. What will come after the ANC? Because the one thing South Africa can't afford in this election is to get rid of the ANC and then bring in a government that is even worse. And the one thing that will seal South Africa's fate of doom would be if we end up with a national coalition between the RET faction and the ANC, the EFF, and Mr. Zuma's new party, the MKP. And the people, the Brentus poll shows that MK is already polling at 13% nationally. It means that they're going to be the third largest party in the country. The EFF is only in fourth place with 10%. Ladies and gentlemen, this doomsday coalition is a clear and present danger to the democratic future of our country. And it is taking shape as we sit here tonight in this hall. Just last week, the leader of the EFF said very clearly that they will give their votes to the ANC on three conditions. Condition one, Floyd Shivambu, the VBS looter must be made the Minister of Finance. <laughs> Two, that your property must be expropriated without compensation. And three, that our banks, our mines, and our reserve bank and industries must be nationalized. Do we want that in South Africa? I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound good to me. Because while some people are still in denial, and some people are only waking up now to this risk of an ANC, EFF, MK, doomsday coalition, this is not news to us. It's not news to us. Wanneer jy dra a blowhemp, is jy slim. Because we saw this coming a mile away. And those of you who are with me on the Congress floor in April last year, were there when I warned about the risk of this doomsday coalition and what it would mean for South Africa. We were the first party with a foresight to warn South Africa what was coming. And just like we were the first people to warn the country about what would happen if we didn't stop Zuma, what we would, would happen with CADA deployment, and we've been fighting against these things ever since. But a year ago, I also knew, Democrats, that the best way to prevent and combat a government between the ANC and the EFF, and more recently now MK, was to form a strong counterweight by uniting the opposition into one strong bloc. And that's why when I warned about the doomsday last year, 
I also made the announcement about the Moonshot Pact. Well, that's now the multi-party charter. And over the past year, 11 leaders from 11 different parties have sat together on a weekly basis and a bi-weekly basis to put aside our differences and to start planning about how we can make South Africa a better place. And that gives me hope. Does it give you hope? I'm hopeful about that because we adopted a joint mission of a new government, a government for an inclusive and prosperous South Africa based on opportunity, freedom, and security for all of our citizens. We adopted a set of principles about how it would work. We've set in place policies and plans about how we're going to get things right in South Africa. And the recent creation of the MKP shows us that we were right to unite the opposition and prepare the country to safeguard our country's future. And the result of all of these developments, the result of all of these developments is simple. In this election, when you cut out all the noise, you disregard all the posters, you don't listen to the adverts, this election is a clear binary choice. Binary choice means you've got one option on the one hand and another option on the other. In this election, we have a binary choice between two different futures. On the one hand, on the one hand, is a future under the Doomsday Coalition, including parties like the ANC, the EFF, and MK. And this is a future, mark my words, Democrats, whether South Africa will rapidly descend into chaos we see in other countries that have adopted radical policies. Venezuela, not a great place to be. Zimbabwe, not a great place to be. Because wherever those radical policies are applied, they bring hunger, they bring suffering, and they bring unemployment. Those who have the means will leave the country, and those who don't will be trapped in a hell under Malema, Zuma, and Mashatile. That is the choice. But the other possible future for us is a new government under the multi-party charter with this DA as a strong anchor tenant, bringing our experience, our good track record of government, our great people, and our record of accountability to the table. And in this future, our country starts down the road to a more inclusive, a more prosperous country that embraces the private sector to unleash millions of jobs for all of our people. With zero tolerance for crime and corruption and with a commitment to destroy poverty in a generation. That sounds a lot better to me. That sounds a lot better to me. Do you want the doomsday? Or do you want the multi-party charter? That's the one we want. And let's be clear about one thing. And I want to make this very clear tonight. Cyril Ramaphosa has failed to do any of this because he is a coward and cannot stand up to the people in his own party. He will never create millions of new jobs, but I will. He will never, he will never end load shedding and water shedding, but I will. He'll never put the state capture Basasa crooks in jail, but I will. So forget about all the noise. In this election, there are two choices, doomsday or the MPC, and that is the reality. But there's one complicating factor in all of this, Democrats. Because like in any environment where there are two stark choices, there are always people who know that they can never win. So instead they seek to play the two sides off 
against each other. And this has led to the emergence of some of these small mercenary parties that exploit the binary situation so they can try and get the best deal by pitting the multi-party charter against the doomsday coalition. And what they know, what they know is that when you split the opposition vote, it gives them more bargaining power with the doomsday people and the MPC. And the best example of these mercenary small parties is the Patriotic Alliance. The PA has sold out the opposition in eight different municipalities around the country. And as we speak tonight in this hall, they are destroying places like Neisner, like Johannesburg, like Ekuleni, in their dirty alliance with the ANC and the EFF. And in Johannesburg, I'm glad Belinda's here. Stand up, Belinda. Where's Belinda? There she is, Belinda. Our leader in Johannesburg. We are taking the Patriotic Alliance and the city to court. Because what have they done? They've helped the ANC and the EFF misuse the people's money for bodyguards and cars for themselves. While the people live in fear of criminals, they voted for themselves two new bodyguards each for their councillors. The PA's MMCs for housing and transport will each get four VIP bodyguards funded with taxpayer money. And when our people can't afford fuel, yo, have you seen the price of fuel this week? Have you seen it? Our people can't afford fuel. But these MMCs will get two new vehicles paid for by the people. And just this past weekend, it was also exposed where the media published a, a recording of Gayton McKenzie bribing our DA councillors to cross the floor. Gaan luister self na die opnames en sy eie woorde vertel Gayton McKenzie hoe hy van plan is om die mense wat vir hom stem op te offer aan die ANC en Julius Malema sy EFF. Alles net vir mag en geld in sy eie sak. Let me tell you why. Because they are selfish. They only care about themselves and they don't care about anybody else. But we must also be careful of an ander kommerwekkende verskynsel. En dis een proces van klein partijen wat obsessief focus op die Westkap. En hulle doel is om sla te raak van die DA en die Westkap. En hulle hande te kry op die enigste provincie in ons land wat nog werk. Maar in die proces het hulle die mense in die noodele van die land heetemal versaak. As die partij dag en nacht aangaan oor die Westkap en selfs aanhoudend praat oor die afstichtiging van die Westkap. Hoe help dit die mense van Pretoria? Hoe help dit die mense hier in Eerste Rus? Hoe help dit die mense van Centurion? Of is hierdie Suid-Afrikaners minne belangrik vir hierdie partij? Now let me tell you, as proud as I am of the DA's record in the Western Cape, I'm proud to be a leader of a party that's doing so well. I'm here to tell all of you tonight, that the DA will never turn our back on the rest of the people of South Africa. We care just as much for you as we care about the people in the Western Cape. But be careful of parties that have given up on people who live north of the Hex River because they cannot be trusted with your vote. And to show you that while these parties have given up on you, we haven't. I'm making a pledge to you tonight that we will use any powers we get if you vote us into a national government. Can you do that? Yes. That we will use those powers 
to bring a pipeline of excellent delivery that we've achieved in the Western Cape into Gauteng to rescue the people here from corruption, from maladministration and bad government. But this brings me to another point I want to make. We've also seen from places like Johannesburg that coalition governments don't work where the vote is split amongst too many small parties. Coalitions work best when they have a strong anchor tenant to hold them accountable, to ensure that the government is stable. And in this mission, I am joined by a team of committed and excellent DA candidates from right here in Gauteng, a big party with the right people to get things done. And Solly, I invite you and the candidates to come and join me up on the stage. Let's give them a round of applause. This is our blue team. This is our blue team. This is our team that is going to rescue South Africa. tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there are five things. There's been a lot of speeches tonight. There are five things I want you to remember. You can forget everything else I've said this evening if you promise to remember these five things. One, do not vote for an opposition party if they're not committed to the multi-party charter, because these are wolves in sheep's clothing. They will take your vote and they will give it to the EFF the ANC and the Doomsday Coalition. Number two, do not vote for parties that have given up on the north of the country because they focused only on the Western Cape. Yeah, yeah. Number three, do vote for the DA if you want a strong anchor party at the heart of a stable government to rescue South Africa and rescue Gauteng. Number four, do vote for the DA if you want a strong anchor party at the heart of a stable new government under Premier Soli Imzamanga. And number five, number five, do vote for the DA if you want a big strong party that can fight back against the ANC, EFF and MK wherever they raise their head in South Africa. It's a vote to rescue South Africa. It's a vote to rescue Gauteng, and it's a vote to stop the Doomsday Coalition. And so it is a win, win, win. What is it? It's a win, win, win. What is it? It's a win, win, win. And win is what we're going to go out of this hall and do over the next 50 days. Because in the past we voted to form the strongest possible opposition. But in this election, we are voting to win. We are voting to win. We are voting to defeat the ANC. We're voting to keep the radicals out of office. So, my invitation to all of you is come and be part of this winning team. Because together, we can win. Let's give hope a chance. Don't miss out. Be a part of the winning team that's here to rescue South Africa. Because in this election, the stakes are too high to stay at home. And now is our time. And together, we can rescue South Africa. I want you all to stand.
I want you all to stand. And I want you to join me in ending off with our beautiful national anthem. Because that is the song that's going to guide us as we march resolutely to the Union buildings on the 29th of May to rescue this country that we all love. And together, we can do it. Together, we must do it. And together with you, I know that we will do it. Let's get out there and make it happen. Democrats, I have to run. All of you get home and join us at 8 o'clock and listen to me as I think about and lie about this.